Uh, so to help us kind of decipher what's going on, especially amid uh, yesterday's pressure in the markets, uh, we're joined now uh, by BMO Capital Markets, Brian Belsky and Charles Schwab's Liz Ann Saunders. Thank you both for joining us. Uh, as we look at the markets in the red, uh, the big five uh, remain largely in the green with the exception of Facebook right now. Uh, but the recent sell-off in tech has some kind of speaking about the, the uh, comparisons to the dot-com bubble. They're looking at, you know, the, the narrowness of, of the recent bull market and saying, you know, are there risks there? Uh, Brian, I want to start with you uh, to really look at whether there are aspects of this current market that you see that are actually riskier uh, than what we experienced back in 2000. Well, thanks for having us, Leslie, and it's an honor to be on with my good friend, Lizanne Saunders. So I would say <laughs> this. Um, if you go back and look at the fundamental construct of the technology sector now versus 20 years ago, it's dramatically different. Well, whether or not these companies, two, two or three times as many companies in technology are paying dividends, you have double the cash flow, you have earnings, by the way, that are exceedingly stable. But like in any other momentum market, there are going to be issues that stocks go up too much. Stocks go up too much in a momentum market and down too much in a momentum market. We clearly saw that on the downside in March. And we started to see that toward the end of, of August as well. And as you said adeptly at the beginning of this hit, that the, the big five have taken the brunt of the damage and, and they're starting to come back. I think that's because of the secular growth on a fundamental basis that they propose. But the more speculative issues, whether or not it's Tesla or Nikola or some of the other new IPOs that have come out, I think it, time will tell in terms of their fundamental wherewithal. But I think technology in general is an asset with respect to uh, continuing to just show strong secular growth. Remember, Leslie, when growth is scarce, growth outperforms. You can find growth in secular areas. You can find growth in cyclical or value areas. And you can find growth from dividend growth. And that's why we're so poised on those three areas in particular.